Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph for a chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I have a special treat today. I have two guest co-hosts with me that own an online shop full of fun, metaphysical witchy supplies that you are really going to love. And specifically, they do sell wands. So I wanted to get them on this episode to have a little chat. So I am going to let both of them take it away. And guys, why don't you introduce yourselves and a little bit of your background and how your shop came to be. Amanda, you want to start? Okay, I am so glad to be here. My name is Amanda Octor, and I am a co-owner of Midnight Apothecary. And we began Midnight Apothecary about, what, Eddie, nine months ago, I think. Yeah, something that about that. about right, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. nine months ago. And it's been a, really a lot of fun some stress but definitely a lot of fun we carry all kinds of various witchy supplies as well as handcrafted organic bath products such as lotion bars candles bath bombs and the witchy supplies that we carry wands uh, we carry deity tokens and animal familiar tokens which are all handcrafted by eddie who i will introduce now my my partner yes well thank you amanda and um yeah so my name is eddie roberts i'm also a co-owner of a midnight apothecary and yes uh we we have a lot of uh handcrafted goodies pretty much everything we make is is handmade and much of which uh is is crafted um, in Amanda's kitchen, and some of which is crafted sort of in my workshop, um, and in particular the wands. Uh, uh, I craft them, and and Amanda gives them her blessing, so to speak. Um, I do. So <laughs> I, I am the I am the I am the practicing witch in this operation. This I is love true. that. And, <laughs> yeah, and I am the I'm the witch admirer. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good balance to have. It is. Well, uh, I, I, I am uh, the Aquarius to the Scorpio. Oh, yes. Scorpio here too. Yes. I like that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Scorpios unite. Yes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We, you know, I think the the best part of having uh, the shop uh, was the excitement of the idea of being able to sort of hand make quality items and. Uh, you know, knowing and sourcing, knowing about and sourcing good um, uh, good materials, good ingredients, crafting things by hand, making them carefully is, I think, a really important part of mm -hmm. uh, our brand and our company because we we want to make sure that, you know, in the wild west that is, we were just talking about this earlier, right? But that is kind of Etsy and the, the the unknowns of all that exists out there. We we want to make sure that we're delivering. Uh, the good stuff and and uh, and at, a, at an affordable price as well and an affordable price it actually right. is very affordable so um well yeah, i, wa I want to add very quickly that a lot of the ingredients that we don't source from elsewhere uh like obviously we source beeswax and things like that elsewhere but the material from the wands and a lot of the botanical ingredients come from our own gardens, whether it's mm -hmm. Eddie's garden, my garden, uh, my trees, uh, you know, various kind of source materials that are either ours that we plant and take care of. I do annual seed blessings with the gardens as well. Um, everything is either hand grown or local, locally sourced and sustainable. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think that's you know, can be tough to find. And a lot of shops don't, you know, include that information like in their listings or on their website. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because mm -hmm. that information doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> that's not the case for them. So I think that um, that's a really wonderful thing that you guys are doing. It's, it's extremely important to both of us, especially because my own practice is more green witch slash cottage witch based. So um, it's something that I've been studying and 
Um, I'm very interested in, you know, the natural path and the environment and plants. And I was just telling Eddie actually earlier this morning about how I talk to my plants. Um, and <laughs> I do too. I, I do. I talk to my plants. Like I consider them like my little people. And um, I do a lot of seed propagation and herb, herb, herb propagation and do, you know, cuttings and water so I can just keep it sustainable um, in the products that I use. And I line them up on my, my um, bathroom windowsill um, out of the reach of the cats because they will eat them. Of course. And, <laughs> and every morning, you know, when I go in to check them and I get so excited when they've grown and I just talk to them and I tell them what a great job they're doing. <laughs> but so, so yeah, sweet. that's part of the process. I actually, if you buy a product from us, probably I have talked to something in there. <laughs> right. It's not, it's not multiple somethings, but yes, um, you know, we're, <laughs> we're fortunate here in the Gulf Coast area in Houston uh, that we have a long growing season. So uh, that helps a lot when it comes to, you know, propagating herbs and, and, uh, and harvesting, Flowers. Uh, yeah, harvesting everything, you know, mm -hmm. myrtle branches, et cetera. So mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, definitely. so important too. We've talked about that on this podcast in the past that you, the energy of supplies when they come to you is still in there. It's still right. in the plants and the crystals and things. And so when you don't know where you're sourcing it from, you're getting a lot of weird energy, the energy of the people who have handled it and things like that right. and it can really affect your spell work. And it can affect the energy that you're bringing into your home. If you, you know, have some plants oh, to bring in. So it's absolutely, it's great to source something from a shop like yours, where it is, you know, you are talking to those plants, you are putting positive <laughs> energy into everything you guys are sending out. Oh, very much so. Very much so. And I completely agree with you. Whenever I have to get something from you know, for my own practice, like crystals or whatever. I am a diligent cleanser, diligent, diligent, diligent cleanser of anything that comes into this house, because I do not want any kind of weird energy to mess up my space, you know what I mean? And, and mess up, you know, any intentions that I'm trying to set at all. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about the wands. So they have mm -hmm. lots of great stuff in their shop, guys. It's not just, <laughs> not just wands, like so, so many things. So definitely going to recommend that you check them out. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to let them tell you all of the different places online <laughs> that you can find them. But for the wands in particular, I know people are curious, uh, how are wands even made? Because most people just, you know, pick up a stick on the ground and they're like, well, what do I do with it now? Right, and right. That usable. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, so our primary material, and, and, and there's a reasoning behind it, but our primary material is crepe myrtle branches. And crepe myrtle is, is maybe not the most obvious choice or the most common choice, but we think it's a great choice because of various um, properties that it has. One, it grows abundantly here. Um, and so we can all we can, we can harvest everything that we need very kind of um, uh, in a very sustainable way. And so, it, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing where if you, if you cut these, they're fairly straight. They have a slight bend to them. Sometimes they'll have a funny little crook. And you can, you can use that to kind of um, have one that's very simple and straightforward or have one that has just a little bit more visual character or tactile character to it. Sometimes they've got lots of little um, bud stems and they, they create almost like this collection of little eyes. I like to call them little eyes. I love on that. The, on the branch. And, um, and so once, once those have all been kind of harvested, um, you know, you, you're looking for the right thickness, you're looking for the right lengths. Well, um, can I add a word about the harvesting really quick? Sure. Um, what I would like to say about the harvesting is we don't just go up to our crepe myrtles or any crepe myrtle and just like hack away um, because we're both so invested in all living things. Of course, every year in January down here, you're supposed to prune back your crepe myrtle trees uh, for the, basically to help them grow better and more abundantly. So it is actually part of the growing process to 
trim back like pretty significantly. Um, in my yard alone, I have five crepe myrtle trees. So my husband actually will go around and trim them so they can grow a lot better and stronger and healthier as a tree. And we collect all of the wood and then Eddie comes over and he takes exactly what he needs to make the wand. So I just wanted to make it clear that we're not just like hacking away at great myrtle trees willy nilly. <laughs> yes, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for clarifying that part, Amanda. Um, and yes, I actually, I've got several, um, uh, you could call them donor trees in my neighborhood. And I, I have a next door neighbor who's perfectly fine with me coming over whenever I like and, and, and harvesting if necessary. But really, it's, it is that time of year, um, early, you know, like late winter, early spring, when it's good to kind of do a quick cleanup on them. Um, and, the, and the cleanup is perfect for the size and length and, and all of that for the crepe myrtles. Um, and, you know, it, we don't process them that much from the standpoint of, uh, you know, how we treat them. I, I just give a light smoothing, you know, I, I, whittle, I whittle the rough size needed, you know, typically our wands are somewhere between 20, 10 and like 14, 15 inches. Um, but about a foot is, is typical. And um, there's an area where we secure the twine for the handles and they're hand wrapped. It's, it's a single layer of, of medium to heavy twine and it's a single wrap, one continuous line that goes all the way around and then it's tied off. And so if, it, if it's a really thick wand, uh, I'll be drilling a hole in each end to secure those and to stabilize them. And then the tip, the tip is such that you, you know, it depends on the thickness of the branch, how you want to taper that. But the, the most uh, simple and, and, and um, natural, minimally processed uh, ones are, are that and just that crepe myrtle. We are, we are planning to um, start testing out and hope to have uh, another variant of the ones on our website soon which is gonna have a, an embedded mineral uh, crystal of some kind, whether it be clear crystal uh, or possibly amethyst, maybe a smoky quartz. We're, we're still tinkering with, with how we would do that. That necessitates a little bit thicker sort of branch in order to embed in the tip. But I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, that sounds really addition. pretty. Yeah. yeah, I think it's gonna be great. And, and each of these um, has a charm affixed to it. Um, it has a little tail, a little twine tail, so you, you can affix a, a charm to it as well. Oh, I love that. Absolutely beautiful. I think it'll be a lot of fun with the crystals in them too. I have oh, yeah, on this yeah. podcast before that I love crystals. They're like everywhere, way too many of them. So. I know. <laughs> like one in a wand and sign me up. Well, I think that yeah. even Eddie has like a crystal collection, don't you? Oh, I've had a mineral collection forever. Um, yeah, I've, I've always been an admirer of specimens. I think that was passed on to me from my my mother and grandmother who are who have always been collectors of, of um, semi-precious stones and, and are mineral collectors. And, you know, they've, they've spent some time out in West Texas and, and my grandmother used to live there. And so I think there's a great appreciation for for not only kind of fossil remains and all that sort of thing, but the, the precious and semi-precious stones um, that are, and, and kind of the, the properties behind them has always been kind of a respected thing in my family. Well, I think um, a, a word on the, the crepe myrtle besides its abundance here and the fact that it is so sustainable is crepe myrtle itself has both masculine and feminine properties to it, which represent calm and healing courage and promotes creativity as far as in traditional witchcraft practice uh mythology and even um asian medicine they use different parts of crepe myrtle trees for diabetes and blood pressure and um wound healing and things like that and of course you know we're not necessarily recommending that without checking with your doctor um but the crepe myrtle tree is such a powerful, strong healing tree that we also think it makes just amazing energy in just its existence to be a, a wonderful tool for anyone who uses wands or even wants a decorative wand to have. Yeah, that's great information. I never knew about the crepe myrtle. So this is all new information <laughs> to me. <laughs> I, I find incredibly interesting. And they're pretty. 
Well, that always they are, they're, they're lovely. <laughs> they're lovely trees. They, you know, what's interesting about that I've always found uh, interesting about the, the crepe myrtle is certain species and varieties of the crepe myrtle have a smooth, smooth outer skin that almost looks like flesh. It's very, yeah. it's kind of uh, slightly, it's almost sinewy. It can look, it, it can look reptilian in some cases. It can look kind of, um, yeah, very fleshy. It's, it's, it's an interesting plant. It's really, it really awesome. is. Really it really is. A, and so we're extremely happy to be working with it and to be able to, you know, spend the time to handcraft the wands out of such, you know, a plant that people can use and, you know, they can have in their own practice. And it may be something that they've never thought about for a wand. I know a lot of people use metal or, you know, God forbid, plastic. Sorry if you love plastic wands. Nope, we, we talk about <laughs> no plastic a lot. No, no. Um, but I think that this is special because it comes from nature. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of energy in this type of wand. And as far as, you know, my own practice, I, I like to use tools and things that come directly from nature because I like the actual energy that that brings into my own practices and with, you know, in my own home. Absolutely. Yeah, so given that think, all these things have yeah. these different energies that you are bringing into your home, <clears throat> do you have any tips for the listeners who are shopping online and looking for things because like Eddie said, it is the wild, wild west out <laughs> on Etsy and it can be very difficult. So are there any things that you look for or anything that is red flags when you need to source some of your materials or get something for your own practice that you don't sell in your shop? I, I will, I guess, take that because I do the practice. Um, Eddie is of course an enthusiast, but I do the actual practicing. So I'm the one I think who's bought more things. Um, a big red flag for me is a store or a person who's selling an individual seller who promises the moon. Um, you know, they promise, oh, this is a guaranteed love spell or this is a guaranteed thing like that. Um, that's always a red flag for me because any kind of spell work or, you know, whatever it is that you're working with is really contingent on the user or operator. Um, there's so many things that, you know, if you're an, a novice to it, I would say, you know, you, and I know on Witch Wednesdays, you talked about this with, you know, grounding, proper grounding and things like that. So there's a lot of things that could go wrong, or there's a lot of things that, you know, just may not happen for you. I mean, you know, you can't necessarily change the direction of the wind, so to speak. Um, so that's a red flag for me. Another red flag for me is when they don't really give any kind of description. Um, it's just a picture of something and they'll say like, you know, soap or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I noticed like, your okay. shop is very, very clear about everything. <laughs> we we try to be, well, one reason we try to be is because, you know, and I talked to Eddie about this. I have a lot of allergies and I have a lot, I have skin allergies and I have asthma and I have food allergies. And, you know, we like to joke that uh, our products are Amanda tested and <laughs> Amanda <laughs> allergy tested because I am allergic to so many things. And that's one reason we try to be very specific in the listing of ingredients because, you know, we're aware there are people out there who are allergic to a lot of different things, things we may not even be aware of that, you know, they could be allergic to, like, there could be people allergic to, I don't know, shea butter. And I mean, I'm not, but there could be somebody out there. And so we feel it's very important to let people know what the ingredients are, um, you know, how to use it. And we also include a little, you know, folklore or um, ancient medicine practices. So we also will talk about what certain things stand for or represent their correspondences like rose or chamomile or whatever it is that we're talking about on a specific uh, product information page. We just think all of those things are extremely important for the person. And so whenever I am shopping around for something that I may need in my, other, my own practice, that's something that I pay attention to because 
it is the wild west. I mean, I, I have received, you know, things that I thought maybe from Etsy or something that have been just horrible. And I mean, one time I remember I was trying to order some amethyst um, and they said, you know, oh, genuine am- amethyst. And I got it. It was plastic. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, no, no, definitely not amethyst. genuine. <laughs> definitely not genuine. So you really have to do your research, know what you're shopping for, know why you're shopping for it, even how you're going to use it. And ask questions. I mean, that's the best thing is, you know, if the seller, if you ask the seller a question and they don't get back to you with an answer that you feel is satisfactory, don't waste your money. Don't waste your money at all because it's just not worth it. And it's not going to help your practice any. I definitely <clears throat> agree with that. That If they own the shop and are making the products, then it would be like talking to the two of you. You know the answers to all of the questions that I've yeah. asked you because you you make them. You know all about yeah. the shoe that you work with. So I think if uh, somebody does not know the answer, doesn't have the answer, mm-hmm. then yeah, definitely a big red flag. I don't know, Eddie. What is a red flag for you when looking around? Um, you know, I I want to see. I know it sounds basic, but like, how much of this am I getting? Like, I I've noticed yeah. that so many of them don't have any kind of quantity information. Mm-hmm. They don't have ingredient information. We we go out of our way to make sure that we try and find local first and organic first because those matter. Things that things that are on your skin and things that are applied directly, um, or even things that are burning in your house. The more that you can get um quality ingredients you know i look for quality ingredients so if they've got an ingredient list that's a thumbs up if they've got organic materials that's a thumbs up so it's it's really it's really a combination of things so i'm i'm looking i'm looking for a lot i've got a high bar for what i want to purchase if we're going to be putting it in our store using it in a product in some way i want to make sure it's it's of the highest quality so we we source um, from multiple, lo- you know, locations and vendors and such, but but we we suss them out pretty good. We we make sure that we're getting the good stuff. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, witches who own shops and they sell, you know, like spell oils and things. I know you guys have oils too, mm-hmm. uh, where they don't list it and they say it's like proprietary information, and I think that's sometimes problematic because like yeah said, I do there too. can be allergies with for a lot I of think. things and you know we send out our sabbat boxes and one of them did have an oil with it and I put everything that's in there because I do not yeah. want anybody to have a bad reaction with something that you're going to be you know putting on your skin um, or yeah breathing in your air that's super dangerous it is mm-hmm. it's very exactly. dangerous yeah I mean I I understand the idea of proprietary information but I I wouldn't you know, I'd rather risk someone sort of, you know, doing their own like little copy. I'd rather risk that and have somebody not, you know, have, I don't know, anaphylaxis shock, yeah, <laughs> you know, than, <laughs> than say, Break out oh, the rash. Right. exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. I think some of the, the proprietary of it is that, you know, the exact amount and then putting your own energy and mm-hmm. blessing into it. Um, yeah. So that's part of what you're paying for when you order it from somebody. Right, else. of course. You could, course. you know, copy it and make it at home, but I, right. I don't. I don't think that's um or should be as much of an issue as I've seen that a lot lately. I'm like, no, just right. tell me what it is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 think I think it's a safety issue. It's a safety yeah. issue. I think I think it's better to to just be clear and honest about the the materials and the and the ingredients used, and people can can decide whether they they like that, and so. Mm-hmm. I think complete clarity in that way, as much as as possible, is is a good thing. Absolutely. Now, this question, putting you kind of on the spot for, other (laughs) than the wands for each of you, if you had to pick just one other favorite item in your store, (laughs) what would it be? Oh gosh, Amanda. I I know. I looked. I looked through the list, guys. There's like so. It's so hard. There's Um, so many different like great items, and there's so many different varieties within like each of the items. Uh, So I am curious what you guys. I don't know. It's hard because I. I mean, I have. 
I have like three top favorites. That's like really hard to do. Okay, well, um, top three. I would like to hear okay. your top three. My 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 first favorite is uh, are the Savs. I love the Savs, and a lot of people I think don't know what to do with them. Um, but we uh, Eddie did a blog post on the Savs and what they are and how to use them. That are you know, it's available on the website. But the salves for me are awesome because I get cat scratches, I get little rashes, and, you know, I get uh, eczema, I get dry skin like eczema, I get winter eczema, and the various salves work for me very well um, to, you know, control or heal those things. My, uh, our new, one of our new salves is the um, joint and muscle relief salve, which is like a pain relief salve, and, um, you know, I like that. And I know people who have used it. That's actually helped the arthritis in their hands. So that's awesome. Oh, that's um, and, it, and they smell good. So I, um, <laughs> I like that. I love the lotion bars a lot. Um, they're so creamy and they come in reusable tins. So you could use it to, you know, put whatever you want in there after, uh, afterwards, you could put earrings or safety pins or, you know, rubber bands or whatever you have. Um, but they're really creamy. They smell so good and they're not gross. Um, I know some lotion bars that in the past I bought elsewhere, like the residue stays on your skin and it feels nasty. Oh but yeah, I know this, what you're talking about. <laughs> these, this sinks in like pretty quickly and you're just, it's so silky on your skin. I love that. And I like, um, the other thing I like are the bath bombs. Um, I've been extremely addicted to the, uh, our brand new chamomile bath bombs. And I was telling Eddie a few days ago, um, when I, I used one and I said, it's the best bath I've ever had. And that is no exaggeration. <laughs> and I mean, cause I've been, I've been through a lot of, um, illness things lately and that chamomile bath bomb was so comfortable after it, like you know, just kind of fizzed and melted into the water. And it was so amazing. And the smell, we use um, real Roman chamomile essential oil. And then we have an actual dried chamomile uh, flower on top. And it was such a great bath. And I know that sounds like so silly, but I love those things. So those are my favorites. I love it. <laughs> Any of you have favorites? Yeah. A couple I, favorites? You know... <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple favorites. I, I have to um, I have to go with the salve as well. But I'm gonna since Amanda spoke about a few items, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak about one of the other things that I I personally make, and those are our um, tokens. Oh, I yeah. really really love the tokens, and and basically we have a couple of different lines of these tokens. And basically what they are are they're small uh, wooden discs, and I have. I have drafted, I've drawn um, all of the artwork for these um, tokens. So each one is its own little piece of art. And so um, we have them for animal familiars and we have kind of some general symbols. We've got a pentagram and, and I think uh, uh, Bridget's cross and a few, we have a few um, uh, different options. And we've also got a few deity tokens as well. Um, an Odin's token, an Aphrodite token Hecate token, yes, Hecate is probably my favorite of the of the tokens. Um, mine too. Um, I would say that's my favorite is the Hecate. Second uh, is the Bridget's Cross. I love both of those. Yeah, yeah they're really a lot of fun, beautiful and and detailed. The Green Man one is so detailed. Yeah, you know, I really enjoyed drawing that. It was um, it was inspired by a lot of the visual research that I had done. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd heard of the Green Man and I was familiar with the Green Man, but until you kind of do that next level of kind of research on it, you don't really, like, like it's good to have like so many sources pull from multiple places and kind of synthesize. I think that's really important to kind of know the body of work, understand the different visual interpretations of, of how a given uh, deity or um, spirit creature manifests or how people interpret that and then to kind of do your own rendition of it um, based on that information which is a lot of fun and, and, and uh, a really great experience learning about it well i think that they look fantastic well, thank you. so to wrap up then 
uh, why don't you guys share everywhere online that they can find you, your shop, your Instagram, all of those things. Sure, Amanda, so it's very simple in terms of buying, but Amanda, why don't you speak to the social media side of things? Oh, sure, yeah, the social media, we are on Facebook and we are on Instagram. And both of those are midnight.apothecary. And they're both the same. So you can find us on, on either one. And we post very regularly. We update about new products. We update about any kind of promotions that are going on. We occasionally will put like little previews or behind the scenes, um, the occasional video of a product or how to use. So there's a lot of information on our Instagram and our Facebook page. So it's midnight.apothecary. Yes. And then, so the uh, website is a little bit different in terms of how you get there. And that's our, that's our um, singular portal for sales at the moment, although we may be expanding to Etsy at some point. Um, but right now it's midnight-apothecary.com for the website. And uh, we've been tinkering with some possible shipping things, but um, uh, but we're, we're still tinkering with that idea. We may offer, um, uh, for certain purchase levels, free shipping in the future, but we're still tinkering with this idea. So yeah, we're working on that because, yeah, we're working on that because, you know, regular shipping can be high. Um, it's not us. <laughs> we don't, we don't set the shipping prices. Um, but <laughs> you know, we would like to be able to hopefully in the near future, offer people a break um, on shipping. So if they follow us on social media, they can be updated for that. And at our website, midnight-apothecary.com, you can also sign up for email as well. That's great. Perfect. And I will definitely have all that linked in the show notes for you guys at whichwednesdays.com to make it easier for you to, to find them. And um, I will share them on Instagram when this is, when you, as you are listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank awesome. you guys very much for being here this week. I really appreciate you chatting with me and chatting about your shop. Thank you. It has been so much fun. Yes. Thanks so much for the invitation. It was, it's been a pleasure. It definitely has. That is all we have for you this week, listeners. We'll see you next week. This podcast was made using Anchor, a free platform that has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus content three times a week and order Sabbat boxes and other supplies at witchwednesdays.com. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and you are listening to episode 75 about wands in witchcraft. I have guest co-hosts, for you in the second half of this episode to chat about wands because they own a online witch store that stocks a ton of supplies and wands happens to be one of them and they hand make these from a local tree so I think it's just a great um, source of information and place to order one if you don't want to make your own and learn a little bit about you know crafting wands and about ethical sourcing and finding great shops online and what to look for and things like that. So that will be coming up in the second half of this episode. But first, I'm going to go over just a little bit of information uh, quickly about wands for you. Now, as you might already know, in witchcraft, a magic wand is a long pointed tool that is used for focusing and directing magic. If you are able to, then making your own can infuse the tool with your personal energy and power and create a strong bond between 
the two of you. And it can just be a really fun way, like witchy way to spend an evening, um, you know, fun witchy activity. But if you can't make your own or just don't want to, don't feel like you have the skill level, um, completely understand that, in which case stay tuned for the second half of this episode. If you do want to uh, craft one yourself, wooden wands are the most common, durable, and easy to decorate, but you can use a lot of other materials that you think would work well for your wand. If you are using wood, you just have to take a walk in nature and look around for a good stick, anything that feels dry, sturdy, and in good condition uh, without any soft spots in the wood. And obviously just trust your instinct. In- in- and obviously just trust your intuition when you're selecting a stick. When you pick it up, just notice how it feels, if it's comfortable in your grip, does it have its own appealing kind of energy to it? What drew you to it? And then of course, we always say this, check your local laws, make sure you're allowed to remove wood from that area. Usually you are, especially something just like a stick, but in some places it is protected. So just be sure. And then of course you want to thank the trees in that area where you get your stick from and leave an offering. Just like a little bit of water is great. Even if you don't know exactly which tree it is, just all the trees in the general area is good. Once you've selected the stick, you can choose to decorate the wand with or without the bark on it. If you want to remove the bark, you can take that off with, you know, knife, of course, use proper knife safety. Uh, But if you're not comfortable with that, then you can use sandpaper to smooth out any rough spots, and especially on the ends. Now, there are magical properties to all different types of wood. Now, there are basic magical properties for a lot of the different types of wood. So I'm going to go over some of the most common, but the wood that my guests talk about in the second half of this episode is actually totally different from what's on the list. So a lot of interesting things to share with you today. In alphabetical order, apple is for fertility, healing, and abundance. Beech is for binding work, love, and friendship. Birch is for protection, grounding, and cleansing. Cedar is for healing, spirituality, and prosperity. Cherry is for mental clarity and decision-making. Elder is for protection, prosperity, and healing. Maple is for love, abundance, money, and health. Oak is for defense, strength, and courage, luck, and longevity. Pine is for protection, cleansing, healing, and mental clarity. And willow is for love, tranquility, and harmony. As always, that whole list is going to be up on the show notes on Patreon and witchwednesdays.com, so you can check those out uh, easily and not have to go back and listen to this or take notes or anything. So that should be easy for you to find, as well as uh, the other properties that I'm about to list. So the next step would be decorating your wands with any magical materials. The best place to start is to think about what you want to use your wand for. It could definitely be an all-purpose wand, or you can get more specific. Like if you specifically want to use it for money spells, love spells, abundance, um, spiritual awareness, anything like that. And then from there, do some research on the different magical qualities of the materials that you might want to use. Um, that could be you know, personal trinkets and family heirlooms, but it can also be things like gold, silver, crystals, things like that. And you're going to want to match those to the intention if you want to use um, your stick for a particular purpose. As far as materials, the different magical properties are for brass, communication, resilience, protection, abundance, and money. Copper is for health, abundance, money, and love. Gold is for beauty, love, abundance, success, and money. Silver is for psychic abilities, protection, and moon magic. Steel is for protection, healing, and good sleep. Tin is for divination, luck, and success. And zinc is for protection, fertility, love, prosperity, and banishing magic. And you can find a lot of these supplies at, at just your local hardware store and get them in, you know, a wire form or nuts and bolts. So those are easy to attach to, you know, the handle or shaft of your wand. And of course, lots of crystals. And of course, lots of witches like to add crystals to the end of their wands. That's something we're going to talk about coming up um, with our guest co-host. But you can find small crystals at your local rock shop too. 
attach, you can either use the wire to wrap it to the base of the stone and attach it to the end of your wand. Uh, might want to do some glue or have a hole drilled in uh, where you can attach the crystal actually inside. Lots of different options there. So I'm going to go over some of the most common crystals that are used in wands and their properties. But again, there are so many and you might find a different one that is calling uniquely to you. So first up is agate, which is for protection, courage, and strength. Amethyst is for intuition, psychic connection, and healing. Citrine is for love, success, abundance, money, and career breakthroughs. Hematite is for optimism, determination, grounding energy, willpower, and for banishing negativity. Jade is for balancing emotions, unconditional love, prosperity, luck, and again, banishing negativity. Labradorite is for intuition, psychic abilities, transformation, dreams, and meditation. Clear quartz is for power, protection, and general magic. So if you're going to be using your wand for a lot of different spells and across sort of all of your magical workings in practice, then clear quartz might be the best option for you. Rose quartz is for self-love, friendship, and romantic love. Smoky quartz is for cleansing, protection, and banishing negativity. Selenite is for cleansing, power, mental clarity, willpower, and spiritual connection. And sodalite is for logic, truth, tranquility, self-esteem, and positivity. And of course, there are a few other ways that you can decorate your wand. Definitely incorporate color magic. You can paint your wand if that calls to you. You can use different colored ribbon to decorate the handle of the wand. And talked about color magic lots of times specifically. We've talked about color magic a lot of times, but specifically in the candle episode, if you uh, want to go back and reference what the different colors are. You can also carve sigils, letters, or numbers into the wood for additional added meaning or draw the design on with a permanent marker. You can use jewelry like rings, necklaces, or earring studs, and you can secure those on in the same way that you would nuts and bolts that you find at the hardware store. And lastly, you could add feathers, dried flowers, or other bits of nature that you find. And then, of course, we have to talk about how to use your magic wand. I have a few ways for you to get started, but there are absolutely so many ways that you can use it in your practice that it could be like an incredibly useful tool to you. So these are just a few. And as you start using it and get comfortable with your wand and sort of sense its energy and how you work together, you can definitely branch out and try lots of other ways to use it. The most common is for casting a circle. We went over that in the casting a circle episode, but all you do is hold the wand in your dominant hand and visualize uh, some sort of light. It's usually, I think people usually associate blue, but whatever light works for you, um, shooting out of your hand through your wand and out into the center of the circle. In this instance, the wand is just an extension of your hand. You have the energy. The wand does not have the energy. You are directing the energy from your hand and out into the center of the circle and then draw the circle and just visualize the light getting bigger until it's the desired size. And first up is of course, casting a circle. We talked about that in the casting the circle episode that sometimes a wand is used for that and it can be incredibly useful, especially for people who have a hard time visualizing just creating a bubble around them. You can instead hold your wand in your dominant hand and visualize a light coming out of it. It's really coming out of your hand. You are the one directing the energy. The wand doesn't have the energy. It's just an extension of you. 
So just visualize your light coming through your hand out of the wand and then using that wand tip to sort of draw that circular shape around you. And that can, uh, for some people, make it a lot easier to visualize where that circle is. And then in the same way to take it down, you visualize that light coming back into the wand and back in through your hand. You can also use a wand to cleanse or charge yourself. You just have to set your intention before you begin your spell, such as cleansing the negative energy from your body or charging yourself with self-love energy or covering yourself with a protective energy. All of those things work. And just point the tip of your wand at your feet and then make circles in the air over your body, like starting at the ground and moving up until the point of your wand is circling the crown of your head. And as you do this motion with your wand, again, visualize that colored light shooting out of the wand and seeping into your body. And that is how you cleanse or charge yourself. Another popular way to use wands is to quote unquote write out an intention because you're using the wand to write your intention in the air letter by letter. Well, you're not using a pen, so you're not actually writing anything, but making that writing motion or word by word with the tip of your wand in the air. So you write out your, your word or your entire intention word by word, and then finish the spell by pointing the wand up to send that intention out into the universe. So it's kind of like writing a petition down on a piece of paper, but you aren't actually committing anything to paper. You're just writing it in the air. And lastly, wands are often used for activating a crystal grid. Crystal grids can be created in any shape that you like. And lastly, ones are often used for activating crystal grids. Crystal grids are, just, you've probably seen them on Instagram, just setting up grids in a certain pattern with your crystals. It can be absolutely any pattern. There's circles, square, diamonds, like all kinds of different ways to create a grid. And they are used to um, amplify the power of the crystals. And then you use that with a certain intention to manifest your desired result. And they're often used for protecting your cleansing spaces and uh, healing. But they can, crystal grids can be used for anything. There's a, that's probably a whole podcast episode in and of itself. But to, you can use your wand to activate the crystal grid after you have it set up. You um, hold the wand in your dominant hand and point the tip at the crystal that's furthest away from the center of your grid and then slowly move the point of the wand over the crystals as you're connecting the dots, starting from the outside and moving towards the center, while you focus your mind on the intention that you have for this crystal grid. And then once you, the tip of the wand has made it to the center of the grid, you state your intention out loud and lift the tip of the wand towards the sky. And that is sending your intention out into the universe. So those are just a few ways to use a wand in witchcraft. Um, again, lots of different options for this, and you can. So those are just a couple of different ways that you can use a wand in your witchcraft. There are a lot of different options for using it, and you might find as you advance in your practice even more options that work well for you. And on the flip side, you may decide that you don't need a wand. We've always said that on this podcast that you don't need any tools. All you need is yourself and your energy. And we have said that before on this podcast that you don't need anything, just yourself and your energy. So if a wand is one of those tools that does not call to you, then don't feel that you need to rush out and buy one. But I know that they are very popular and very useful. 
Uh, so if wands are something that speaks to you, then I think this is a good time to head over to the second half of this episode and introduce you to the guest hosts who make wands for their shop. 